We now know that the building blocks of proteins are amino acids and inside our body we only have 20 different types of amino acids that constitute the different types of proteins. Now the next question is how exactly are these amino acids held together inside any given protein? So what is the type of bond that holds our amino acids together? Well, this bond is actually a special type of covalent bond known as a peptide bond or an amide bond. So let's begin by taking a look at the following reaction that basically describes the reaction that forms this peptide bond. So let's suppose we're on the reactant side and on the reactant side we have amino acid A and amino acid B. Now amino acid A contains the side chain group given by R1 and this one contains a different side chain group given by R2. And any one of these amino acids can be any one of the 20 amino acids found inside our body. For example, this can be glycine and this can be lysine and so forth. Now, under certain conditions, these two reactants will react and they will produce the following product. Now product C is a dipeptide and a dipeptide simply means we have two amino acids connected by a peptide bond that is shown in green. So this carbon on product C is this carbon on reactant A and this nitrogen on product C is this nitrogen on reactant B. So basically this carbon forms a bond with this nitrogen shown in green and that is our peptide bond between these two amino acids A and B. Now, whenever we react a certain type of reactants and whenever a chemical reaction takes place, we know that the number of atoms is always conserved because we have the conservation of mass. Now, let's take a look at this carbon and then compare it to this carbon. In this particular case, the carbon contains a single oxygen atom. But in this particular case, the carbon contains one, two oxygen atoms. So somewhere in this reaction, there was a loss of an oxygen atom. Likewise, if we take a look at the nitrogen and compare it to this nitrogen, in this particular case, we have three H atoms. In this particular case, we only have one. So when we basically combine A and B to form C, we basically lose two H atoms and one oxygen, and that is a water molecule. So in the process of forming this peptide bond, we always release a water molecule, and that's why this reaction is known as a dehydrolysis reaction or a condensation because we release a water molecule. So we have amino acid A and B react to form a dipeptide C and we also release a water molecule. So going this way, we have a dehydrolysis, a condensation reaction, but if we go in reverse, if this bond breaks by using a water molecule, that is known as a hydrolysis reaction. Now, let's take a look at the arrows. So the arrow going this way is smaller than the arrow going in reverse. And what that basically means is the reactants A and B are thermodynamically more stable than the products C and D. And so if we plot this reaction on the following graph, the energy graph, where the y-axis is the energy state and the x-axis is the reaction progress, this is what we're going to get. And notice that the energy values of these reactants is lower than the energy values of these products. And that's exactly what we mean by our reactants being thermodynamically more stable than our products. Now, what exactly does that actually mean about our reaction? Well, what it means is for this reaction to actually take place, and for us to go from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, so for, uh, for, uh, for us to go from this energy level right over here to this energy level, let's say right over here, we have to input a certain amount of energy. So that means that the peptide bond formation is a process that requires energy. Now, where does that energy come from in our body? Well, the energy comes from using ATP molecules. So 
It turns out that to actually form a peptide bond, we have to use ATP molecules as a result of the fact that the reactants are thermodynamically more stable than our products. So once again, notice that the four reaction, which is a dehydrolysis reaction, is thermodynamically unfavorable. And this means that to form a peptide bond, we actually have to input a certain amount of energy. That energy comes from the ATP molecules found inside our body. Now, the next question is, if these products are higher in energy than these reactants here, why exactly do these bonds not spontaneously break inside our body? So why don't the bonds inside the protein holding our amino acids actually break spontaneously? And the answer is because of a high activation energy. So if we take a look at the following reaction going backwards, this here is the activation energy, the barrier energy energy that is needed that we must overcome to actually go from the product side to the reactant side. So even though this reaction here, so going from the products to our reactants is thermodynamically favorable, it is not kinetically favorable. And what that means is we have to input a lot of energy to actually overcome this uh, reverse activation barrier and we simply don't have that much energy under normal conditions inside our cells at a pH of 7 and at the normal body temperature. We don't have enough energy for this reaction to actually take place. In fact, to actually break the peptide bond inside our body, we have to use special enzymes that basically decrease this activation barrier. So once again, if the dipeptide bond, if the dipeptide formation as described in this diagram is energetically unfavorable, why doesn't the reverse reaction take, sp take place spontaneously and naturally in our body? Well, it turns out that the activation energy is simply too high, it's simply too great, and at the conditions of our body temperature and neutral physiological pH, this reaction simply does not take place. So we conclude the following three facts about peptide bonds and the biosynthesis of peptide bonds. So peptide bonds form via a dehydrolysis reaction. And what that means is at the end of forming a single peptide bond, we always release a water molecule. Now we can also say that the breaking of a peptide bond is a hydrolysis reaction. So we have to use a water molecule to actually break this peptide bond to give back this carbon, its oxygen, and this nitrogen, its 2H atoms. Now, fact number two is peptide bond formation, the biosynthesis of peptide bonds, is a thermodynamically unfavorable process. And what that means is we always have to input energy. We have to take energy away from ATP to basically form the peptide bonds that hold these amino acids together inside protein molecules. And fact number three is the reason that inside our cells these proteins don't spontaneously break apart and these peptides don't spontaneously break apart is because this reaction here is kinetically unfavorable and this reaction is kinetically favorable and what that means is there's simply too much energy in the activation barrier for us to actually go in reverse from the products to our reactants. So peptide bonds are kinetically stable. We would have to increase the temperature to a high temperature or we would have to use an enzyme that decreases that activation energy to actually break the peptide bond and go back to these individual constituent amino acids. So these are the bonds that hold our amino acids together inside protein molecules.